five responsibilities five job assignments were given to both the man and the woman it's very important to realize that be fruitful multiply fill subdue and dominate and you realize very quickly that man alone could never be fruitful multiply and replenish woman alone cannot be fruitful multiply and replenish that part we quickly understand you need a man and a woman the stand fast love of the lord never ceases is mercy talk about since this is the first day i want to just take the first few minutes and um, take you into the passage that i'm going to deal with today i'm going to talk about how we have gone through jesus christ we've gone from curse into blessings that we as believers redeemed people are not living and operating under curse and um, we are not a part of the we are not a, uh, we are not fallen creatures anymore we are redeemed creatures but still live in a fallen world we still live in a world that are under that is under curse but we are not under curse we are under blessing so this is about working under blessing work under blessing and how that goes work is an important aspect of man's life and it's totally affected by the fall and redemption has to do with 
restoring everything that was affected through the fall it relates to what happened on, uh, redemption relates to what happened at the fall it is all about restoring and dealing with the damages done through the fall now when you look at it like that you will easily understand that work is also dealt with in redemption the things that were damaged in man's work were also restored through the redemptive work of Christ we all understand that through redemption our sin has been dealt with the sin problem has been dealt with something has happened to us with regard to sin we are not set free from a sinful world we still live in a, live in a world of sin there is sin all around us sin is there present in the world we are not in heaven where there will be no sin we are still living in a world where there is sin we are living among people who are in sin and so on a sinful world is our world an imperfect world but still god has done something very significant for us with regard to sin that we can today say certain things about our relationship with sin and what has happened to us we can say that god has forgiven us our sins and we can also say that we have power over sin instead of sin having power over us romans chapter 6 literally says sin shall not have dominion over you shall not shall not dominate you we as christians can go as far as saying that sin does not dominate us it does not rule over us anymore it used to rule over us but now our position is such since sin has been dealt with we have been given power and victory over sin this much we can say even though we live in a sinful world among sinful people and so on the same thing can be stated about work see we live in a work in a world that is fallen and in sin it's not a perfect world work is difficult in this world in that sense it's imperfect world it's a world under curse but we are a blessed people we have already moved into god's blessing and we need to understand how the power of blessing works in our lives today to put us over to give us victory in the realm of our work how we can triumph with regard to our work how we can have victory with issues concerned with our work how we must believe god for overcoming power even in the realm of our work today in this society so that is what we're going to be dealing with so let's first understand what sin did to uh, what sin and fall did to the work of man this realm of work you know when god first made man the bible says in chapter 2 verse 15 of genesis we read that god gave man work he said till and god it till it means to cultivate it god it means to protect it so man was given a job now genesis 2:15 has made some people to think that it is man's job to work and it's not the woman's role to work god gave work only to woman uh, to the to the man they think but it is not so because if you go to chapter 1 and verse 27 it says that god made man in his image and likeness he made man male and female he made them and then verse 28 says this god blessed them and said be fruitful multiply fill or replenish subdue and dominate five things he said be fruitful multiply fill subdue and dominate all these five things to be fruitful multiply fill subdue and dominate all these five things is god given work to both of them god blessed them it says doesn't say god blessed him it says god blessed them and the previous verse says god made them male and female god made man in his image and likeness made them male and female and he blessed them saying so it's very clear that the words were spoken over both of them and these five responsibilities five job assignments were given to both the man and the woman it's very important to realize that be fruitful multiply fill subdue and dominate and you realize very quickly that man alone could never be fruitful multiply and replenish woman alone cannot be fruitful 
multiply and replenish. That part we quickly understand. You need a man and a woman to be fruitful, uh, multiply, increase in number, and fill. It is not possible for just a man or just a woman. Both of them have to join together and work together to produce multiplication, fruitfulness, and replenishment, right? And the last two items also, subdue and dominate, means that the whole earth is given in their care so that they may administer everything in this world and make it produce and do whatever they want to. They can produce anything they want, in any quantity they want, in any quality they want. They have it within their power and authority to take this earth and make it do what they want it to do. And they can make innovations and discoveries. And we talked about having dominion is to come up with new solutions to problems and, uh, and, and bring a lot of good to mankind and society in general. Take the authority that God has given to them to subdue and dominate, not only administer, not only to produce from the land that is given to them, but also to bring forth new solution to problems and so on. So all of these things, all of these five things, even subduing and domination, is not told just to man or the woman, is told to both of them. They must join together and work on this enterprise of subduing and dominating, of being fruitful, multiplying and replenishing. They must do these five things together, join hands and do it. Such a big job that when God made man, he realized that he needs a helper. Now, I've seen some men say, I'm just the main one, she's the helper, you know. But if you need a helper, then she must not be that bad, you know. The one who needs help can't be that great. <laughs> you can't say you're the main one and she's just the helper. Helper is not cheap. Helper is very important. Helper is there because you can't do it by yourself. That's why the helper is there. So the helper is not a secondary role. It is a role that is given by God to complement, you know, the things that are missing in the male, the female complements, the things that are missing in the female, the male complements. It's a complementary role that God has given. It is not about who is superior and who is inferior. That kind of thinking is wrong. So God made them male and female, and gave them these responsibilities, these jobs that they are supposed to do. Now, this is the job, these five things, basically, given to both of them. And when sin happened and the fall happened, it affected them in their work very significantly. What did it do? If you move to third chapter, verse 14 to the last verse, in, uh, in third chapter, you read about uh, sin and fall and, it's, and the punishments that came upon uh, the man, the woman, and the serpent, and so on. There, a lot of details are given. But look at the details about the woman. When God spoke to the woman, he said, in chapter 3, in verse uh, 16, uh, you will read uh, uh, something like this. Chapter 3, verse 16, God says to the woman, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you. Now we have dealt with this, but think about it in this way. I'm trying to show you how the fall and sin affected man's work, both man and woman and their work particularly. I showed you that fruit, being fruitful, multiply and replenishing, subduing and dominating is the job that God has given to them. Now, if you look at it in that way, here we see that that job becomes difficult because God says that her sorrow, the woman's sorrow will be multiplied in conception. Conception itself is going to be a problem and pain she shall bring forth children the, the, the bringing forth is going to be a problem. So conception, the bearing, and the bringing forth of children is going to be a problem. So that makes the fruitfulness, multiplication, and filling that job difficult. She's supposed to do the job, but that is difficult. And then the man is supposed to be involved in that job also. 
So your desire, he says, God says, shall be for your husband, he shall rule over you. Now something happens in their relationship, in their marriage. So that instead of working together, they are in competition with one another. She desires to live with him and uh, get along with him and so on and be close to him, but he rules over her or he tries to dominate her. And when you try to dominate, when a man tries to dominate, it always ends up being, you know, paid back in full. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, <laughs> running over, you know. <laughs> She's not going to stand by and watch as you dominate. So there's a competition. The spirit of competition comes in. Now that makes fruitfulness, multiplication, replenishment, subduing and dominating, everything difficult. All these five things, difficult. They can't do anything together. They can't get together to do anything. They can't even produce a child. And even if they manage to conceive, there's going to be a problem in bringing forth the child. And just getting along is going to be a problem because they are in competition with one another. So their job ultimately experiences difficulties. They experience difficulties in their job. That's the way I would put it. In the job that God has given to them, they are experiencing difficulty. Now, look at the man in particular. Verse 17 to 19 is about the man. To Adam, God said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. And you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken. For dust you are and to dust you shall return. Boy, how much words are spent just stating this. Just look at that. To the man about his work again. It is all having to do with work. Verse 16, 17, 18, 19. All of them having to do with the job that God has given to them. The job of being fruitful, multiplying, replenishing, subduing and dominating. It is all about that. Now man is going to have a problem with the ground. The ground is going to be cursed. It's not going to produce as it is supposed to produce. So job becomes... Even more important because he's going to spend a lot more time in the job because it's going to be difficult. It's going to require a lot more time because he's got to pull out the weeds and the thorns and thistles and all of this stuff. Not just plant something and let it grow and reap, you know. He's got some other extra work to do to get rid of the unwanted things. You know, thorns and thistles are coming up. So job becomes all the more important, consuming more of his time, more of his effort, more of his labor, more sweat and more toil. That's what life becomes after the sin and the fall. On the whole, if you read chapter 3, you know, we see that man's work, it is all about work, basically. And how much the work that was given to man, both when I say man, I'm now meaning man and the woman. How much they are affected in the realm of their work. <clears throat> Another thing to be noticed here is this. One thing that has happened is, um, they were affected in a very significant way. God has designed the man and woman and everything in a certain way. See, God has designed the tree to grow from the ground. You know, since it comes from the ground, it has to be attached to the ground. If you pull a tree out of the ground, it begins to die. It will have life no more after a while. It has to stay attached to the ground. You don't take the tree and put, a, put the tree in the terrace, you know. On a cement floor, you put, plant it in the ground. It has to stay attached to the ground. The ground and the tree must have a relationship. Similarly, when God made man... His source, see, everything must be attached to its source, connected to its source, linked to its source in order to not survive but also flourish. Everything must be vitally connected to its source. So what is man's source? 
Man's source is the earth because God made the body of man from the earth. He has got another source also because his spirit came from God. God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. So he's got two sources. One God, the other is the earth. In order for man to survive, flourish and thrive in his life and for all things to be well, he's got to be vitally connected to the earth. Because his body came from the earth, the earth is needed by him. He's got to have a healthy connection to the earth. He's got to live in the earth. He's got to sow in the earth. He's got to reap from the earth. He's got to eat what grows from the earth. Earth and him must be connected very closely. He cannot live in disharmony with the earth. He's got to have control over the earth. He's got to be able to rule over it in some way. He's got to have a healthy relationship with it. He's got to have a healthy relationship with God also. What happened in the fall? Both are damaged. Relationship with God is cut off. He has become now far from God. Disconnected from God. That's what we call spiritual death. Disconnected from life source. That's what happened in the fall. The day you eat of it, the forbidden fruit, you shall die, God said. He didn't just drop dead on that day. But he died inwardly, spiritually. He got disconnected from God. The life of God was cut off. That is a very significant thing, damage. But then the earth also is now not cooperating with him. He needs the earth very much to cooperate with him in order for him to thrive and flourish. But the earth became cursed. Its status has changed now. It's not going to produce as it should produce. It's going to give him problem. He's going to toil with the earth. He's going to sweat with the earth. And uh, this is his relationship now. Everything has become difficult. Now, as a result, we live in a fallen and broken world. Man was made for work. Work is one of the main things about man. God made man just like himself. God worked six days and rested seventh day. God made man for work. But in this life, work has become a problem for man, for both man and the woman. And work has become very difficult for both man and woman. All right. Now, so the thing that was affected very deeply and greatly in man's life is work and the provision that the work brought, the provision that was brought through the work. Work and provision was affected. Now I think for all of us it hits the nerve. <laughs> you know, we understand this thing. Even if we don't understand anything, we understand this. The sin and the fall has terribly affected work and our provision. God has chosen to provide for man through these things that he's supposed to do. And now the work and the provision is affected. So now comes in poverty, the lack and the want and the insufficiency, failures, loss, all of these things enter the picture which was not there before the fall, before sin and the fall. Now things have changed. The world has become a different world. It's 
Oh, 